What's going on, good people? Tonight, the Dallas Stars play the LA Kings. We talk about that. We talk about the last few games over the last week or so because we couldn't do a show. Um, snow and honestly, a little bit of under the weatherness on my part. Uh, so sit back, relax, enjoy the show. figure out what's going on with these stars here lately they they like to play this comeback game and it's driving me nuts yeah you think you got it bad do you know who we play tonight yes i do the kings right yes sir uh, you told me to look at their win loss i'm fixing to look at it here in just a minute yeah look at their most recent schedule and tell me if that looks familiar all right so let's I mean, take it here Heads up, it's not going to be identical scores, but you might see a, a, a familiar trend. Gonna get All right, well, their, well, their last 10 games, looks like they played, what, Carolina, Detroit, Florida, Tampa Bay, Washington, Detroit, Toronto, Edmonton, Vikings, and San Jose. And in that time span, they are 2, 4, and 4. Did you say Vikings? No, San Jose. Uh, oh, did I say uh, Vegas? King, Vegas night. Excuse me. <laughs> Jesus. It's been a long morning already. So Vegas night, excuse me. And San Jose. The letters are v, VGK. So. I love you, bro. I, I love got, you know. I got football on the brain. Uh, you know, my Texans are doing amazing. And. You know, they got the Brown. I mean, they got the uh, Ravens this weekend, and that's gonna be a tough one. But <laughs> with CJ, with CJ Stroud in there, honest and truly, I, ha- I have this feeling like anything can happen. Mm. Mm. You called it right too. The, the Ravens yeah. are still gonna be the Browns to me. <laughs> but um, and in the Stars' last ten, we were what, what Chicago, Nashville, Minnesota, Minnesota, Nashville, Colorado. Uh, Milwaukee, Chicago, Chicago, uh, St. Louis, and we were what five, four, and one. This man said Milwaukee too. <laughs> no, that's it. God dang! What? Uh, it's a... I love you, bro. You know this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but look, 
Look at the up, down, up, down. Can you see any similarities, or is it just me? No, they're, they're, they're both kind of really, really similar in, in, in that, and record-wise, they're not too far off either. You know, the Kings are 21, 11, and 8, and the Stars are 25, 12, and 5, so very, very similar, very well. well this one's going to be a tough one, I think. Um, Stars are going to have to keep their head on a swivel. Ottinger's going to have, have to be on his A game. Um, I know he's coming back from injury, and now we've got Wedgwood out with injury. Uh, I think, I believe what they say, they're going to use the reserve for right now, and hopefully they'll bring uh, Mr. Matt Murray back up and give him another shot. I, I, I'm surprised in that last stint that they only gave him one shot, considering how good he did in that one shot. We were talking about that. You and I, we talked about it, me, you, and Weldon as well, I believe. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's – I don't know how you carry three different goalies, but if you're going to have a uh, – what do you call it? Revolving door of goaltenders, you know, you, you might want to consider keeping Matt Murray up here. Well, yeah, and, you know – it's ridiculous that you let uh, Wedgwood play 11 straight games without giving him a break. That's, you know, he's not built for that. And I think that might have, I don't know what his injury is. I know they're saying lower body, but, you know, when you're not used to playing that many games in a row, it takes a toll on your body. And I, I, I honestly, and truly, I, I, I put the blame on, on the coaching staff. Uh, you know, I don't know what Pete DeBoer is thinking, you know, yes, I understand you want to have the players in there to, to win these games, but truth be told, Matt Murray is a very solid goal goaltender. And, you know, honestly and truly, I think some of those games that we lost because Wedgwood was in there might have been because of fatigue on Wedgwood. Uh, oh, granted, yeah. don't get me wrong, uh, you know, our, our, our goaltenders don't seem to be getting the help and support as they should. Uh you know, especially on, on breakaways and things of that nature. But, you know, even still, you, you can't you can't play these players till they break because, I mean, look what's happened. You know, first Ottinger goes down. You make Wedgwood play every single game pretty much other than one game. You give him a one-game break. That's, you know, that's too much. You know, if they'd have split it up some. You know, maybe maybe have Wedgwood play the first four or five, and then you throw Matt Murray in there. Then have him play another three or four, then you throw Matt Murray in there. And that way it gives him a little bit of a break in between. But you, you're, you're constantly pushing, you know, uh, someone like that. And granted, I mean, people don't realize what these uh, goaltenders go through. They're, their bodies stretch in ways that normal, you know, regular players don't stretch in. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're on ice. And, you know, here's another thing. They're not out there playing, so they're not out there constantly in motion. You know, there's moments where when it's in the, off, when, when it's in the opposing team's offensive zone, they're basically just standing there keeping an eye on things to see what happens. And then in a split second, they have to get their bodies and minds and everything ready for, for you know, fast breaks and things of that nature, and that's how injuries happen. You know, it, it's usually not – you know, when you're prepared and ready to go for it, it's usually when your body's just not ready. You know, uh, look at how many hamstring injuries happen, especially in the NFL. You know, you, you get these players that aren't used to the cold and things of that nature, and then they go out there, or, or you get players that aren't used to doing things like they're doing, like punters and things of that nature, and they have to run up there and try to get a tackle, and they pull a hamstring out of it, you know? It, yeah. It, it's just like anybody else, you know, they're not used, if you're not used to using those body, those muscles, or those muscles are, you know, uh, stationary for, for a period, and then you have to throw those muscle groups in motion, yeah, I mean, that, that's going to take a toll on your body, and these goal, these goaltenders are really, you know, the, I, think, I think Coach DeBoer was asking way too much of Wedgwood. Yeah, it, it it blew up in his face too because yeah. you know all he did was go down and play for a, or play a puck, and then next thing you know he's not getting back up very quickly, if at all, you know. And 
like the the thing that the announcer said was kind of key to me. Like Jake Ottinger was throwing in, and he was throwing in cold. Yeah. And like, and not only that, but you know, go, let's go back to last season. Ottinger burned out. Why? Because they played him too much. They mm-hmm. did to him what they did to Wedgwood. And it makes you wonder where's their where their confidence is at because you know way back when they had Bishop and Hedovin, you know from from what I remember anyway they were alternating almost every other night. Yeah. Um, that was a couple of years ago when they made a run at the Stanley Cup Finals as well, but you know that that's a tough thing because. You know, you play goalie one in four to five games, and then you throw in goalie two. You expect him to be goalie one B, and it's just like, no. If you want him to be one B, then you need to play him. Yeah. Um, like it, it, it just, I don't know. It's, it's driving me crazy too because you do have Matt Murray, and you know the the ice time is important. The experience is important. You know, he's not facing a Stanley Cup final scenario right now like Ottinger did. God bless him um, to be thrown into that fire. And, and, you know, he ran away with it. Not everybody's going to be able to do that. And for that matter, not everybody needs to be thrown into the fire like that. Yeah. And I mean, we're, we're doing OK. We're what the top ish of the, the standings um, in the division or conference, one or the other if not both, why wouldn't you give somebody a rest right now? Now is the time that you, you know, now is definitely the time that you want to get these guys rested and get ready to start for that final push to, uh, you know, to where we need to be. Um, Right now, standings-wise, Winnipeg is number one. They're at 28, 10, and 4. Colorado's at number two, they're at 28, 13, and three, and we're coming in at number three at 25, 12, and five. Once again, I attribute some of these losses to overplaying our netminder. I'm inclined to agree with you because, you know, each of those netminders do have their own playing style, which forces everybody to adapt and overcome around them. You know, and it just, it, hmm. you don't have your team ready for anything, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No. And you got to be ready for anything. And you know what? If, if it's a vote of confidence on, on, on uh, Matt Murray right now, because he hasn't had that much NHL experience, well, you know what? Same could have been said about Ottinger back in the day, and now look at him. Also, on top of that, why aren't you doing something then to, I don't know, maybe bring in somebody that you would feel a little bit more confident about instead of killing your two netminders? Well, that comes down to salary cap. The salary cap is, if you go on cap friendly, I believe it's called, you can see what the exact number is. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars not millions but hundreds of thousands like it's it's bad and you know to, to expand on what you said here we go with the management thing again because god i love that stuff um you, you gotta that that money is is kind of a fragile thing you know we know this and like somebody's do I, do I want to say it like that? Do I want to say somebody is not earning their, their price tag? And whoever that might be, you know, it needs to be dealt with, for lack of a better way of putting it. Like, I'm, I'm trying to be as delicate with it as I can because it's only hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not a couple million. So you pigeonhole yourself in there with X amount of money that doesn't give you any room to do anything with it. You're forced to use the long-term IR for the money. And Matt Murray is just waiting in the wings. You got Poirier, you got Thompson, you got all those dudes down there. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you didn't interrupt me. I was just agreeing with you. Like, 
if you want to to call yourself a defensive minded team, man, you got to do better to to mind your defense. Don't come at me with the goalie's a goalie, not defense. I know, but it's your last line of defense. Yeah, but your defense is your first. In in my opinion, your defense is your first line goalies. I like the way you said that. Can you can you expand on that? Your defense is your first line goalies. They're the ones that should, you know, you know, if if you're looking at things the way that you should be looking at them, that's your first line of defense, and that's your first line of goalies. They should act just as goalies. They should be fighting for that puck, getting it out of the zone and taking as much pressure off of your actual goalie as they can. And it doesn't seem like they're doing a lot of that, you, you know. Cool. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and yep. they, with they the... constantly put our netminers in bad positions. Yeah, they don't match the play styles either. How many times have you seen Wedgwood go out and play a puck and the defense is just like, uh, what? Yeah. Honestly. I mean, like, okay, Ottinger is Ottinger. He's number one for a reason. He has his own skill set, and so is Wedgwood. Wedgwood has his own skill set. He's He deserves to be on this team. But you've got to play the same way no matter who's in net. You've got to protect them because their only job should be to get that little black piece of rubber. Yeah. That's all that's in their job resume. That's it. Stop the little black piece of rubber. Everything else, the guy's in front of them. And so help me, good Lord above, I hate that when when any hockey team leaves their goalie hung out to dry. Because just like the quarterback of a football team, I'm not going to go off on that tangent, guess who takes the blame when when a team loses? It's going to be the goalie. It's going to be the goalie, yeah. It's Wedgwood's fault that he allowed five goals on 18 shots and three of them were soft. What, what, what was everybody in front of them doing? Were they, were they playing the puck or were they playing the complete opposite side of the, the, the goal? Where were they? That's not... It's not the goalie's job. I mean, I'm sure the defense. Uh, yeah, I'm sure the defense appreciates it when a a goalie can bark out where they're supposed to be. But you know, not everybody can be a Henrik Lundqvist. Not everybody can be an Ed Belfour. We're past that. We need to be a team. Different, way different sport than way back then. One hundred percent agree. Let me ask you this. How often in your tenure as a Stars fan or hockey fan in general, how often have you seen a goalie in the Dallas Stars system, for that matter, whatever way you want to, to, to count it, how often do you see them just come out and steal a game? A goalie? Not very often. I mean, I've seen goalies stand on their heads and, 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 and steal games, but honest and truly, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess it does happen uh, quite a bit now that I'm thinking about it. There have been some, some instances, but, you know, um, for the most part, usually it's, it, you know. They play collectively. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a collective effort as opposed to a goalie on his own winning a game. Look, except for Vegas last year, I can't remember a goalie coming in hot and and absolutely riding the wave. If it wasn't for Aiden Hill, I don't think Vegas would have dominated us as hard as they did. Because all you have to do is outwork Vegas and boom. You know? But if you got a goalie out there dictating the pace, I mean, to me, that says there's something wrong. That that tells me something's weak. It really does. Because, go ahead. No, I was just, I was kind of laughing. I mean, it does. It's like, 
as a Houston Texas fan, would you expect CJ Stroud, for example, to come out and just dominate the full game by himself? Probably no, not, right? No, and in fact, if you ever see his interviews, he never takes the credit himself. It's never just him because you know what? He realizes that those receivers that he's getting the balls to, they're the ones that are making the plays and moving it further down the field. He understands that you also have to have that running game. So he gives a lot of props to his offensive line for blocking for him because if they don't give him the time to even get the ball out, it ain't going to happen regardless. And then he gives props to his running backs for continuing to run the ball, even though you know we don't have they didn't have the best running game, but at least it's enough to keep defenses honest. You have to have that three headed monster. You know you, you kind of have to have that a good offensive line that's gonna you know keep the pocket clean and keep it you know keep keep the defenders off your off your quarterback. You have to have that running back to keep that running game, and then you have to have you know, the, the quarterback and wide receivers to get, you know, your passing and, and, you know, down the field plays. And if you don't have, you know, you can have two and miss the one and you're just going to be a mediocre team. And then that's where you become one dimensional. The Dallas Stars, in my opinion right now, are very one dimensional. And in fact, the only game that I have seen of theirs, in my opinion, where they, and, and, I'm, and I hate to say this, I'm talking about the entire season right now. The only game that I can that I can think of in in my mind where they actually went out and played as a whole team, and you know defenders did amazing jobs defending and, and helping out you know you know the goal your goal meant minor and 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 everything like that was the game on uh, on the I, I, that first game against Minnesota when uh, when uh, Matt Murray was in in net and you know. The first period, though, Matt Murray was on his – he was standing on his head. You know, he, he was dealing with, with several shots on goal. But as the second and third period went on, it's like they kind of all melded and meshed together and wound up coming out of that thing with not only a win but a shutout. And we haven't had very many shutouts here, you know, this, this season. And, in fact, I want to say that's probably – the last, the last shutout we've had in the last ten games, if not more, I don't remember. If, if not more, um, to, to, to piggyback off of that, I believe there was an eight-one game in there as well. There was. Uh, that was against. I uh, don't get me lying. Uh, <laughs> I think it was Chicago. I believe it was Chicago. Yes. I think it was that first Chicago game. So, what? Four to nothing is a shutout. And yeah, that's a big score. Eight to one is not a shutout. That's a big score as well. But you come back and then you get mollywopped. What was it? Six to three by Nashville in that span as well. Yes, we got WAP, WAP by uh, Nashville 6-3. to three. And, and then, okay. That was just the other night. <laughs> so, we, we got walloped by Nashville twice, really. I mean, they beat us 4-3 to three on the 6th, and they beat us again 6-3 to three on the 12th. And you know what sucks, though? Let's take it back a little bit further. The beatings that Colorado's handed us. How do you have a lead? And then you cough it up and you lose 6-3. I don't know. You know, it's like this team shows flashes of greatness, you know. Uh, let, let's go back to December 2nd. We played against the Lightning. We beat them 8-1. to one. Then we played the Lightning again on the 4th, and we lost 4 to nothing. <laughs> the cup runneth dry. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, okay. Then, and, you know. Then all of a sudden we, you know, we, we beat uh, Detroit on the 11th, six to three, which Detroit's a, a very good team. Um, and then once again that that uh, we, you know, we beat Chicago five to four on the 29th. Then we come out and wallop them eight to one on the 31st of December. Uh, you know, New Year, uh, New Year's Eve. I think that's the game you were thinking of right there, that that eight to one. Yeah, that but, sounds about right. 
But you know what's funny is I'm sitting here looking at not a single shutout on our end. We've been shut out. But the only shutout I've seen so far is the one that Matt Murray threw out. I mean, look, that to, to me says... Oh, we, uh, we, we, we shut out the Jets on the 28th of uh, uh, November. Two to, two to nothing. <laughs> and here we are in January, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, that, that tells me all I need to know about Matt Murray, really. Because shiny new goaltender, not everybody knows everything about it. Right now, he's a little secret weapon-ish. You know? We've been in that position before. And he handled his own, especially in that first period against Minnesota. I want to say they, they had something like almost 23 shots on goal in that game, if I'm not mistaken, in the first period. Uh, give me a second here. Let me get that. Let me pull that game up real quick. Good Lord. 23 shots? I think so. It was a pretty high number because I, re- I remember, you know, the uh, – uh, let's see here. Let me get this opened up here. Go to this game. Can I say something while you're doing well, that? They had they had twelve shots on goal versus our four. The second period they had nine shots on goal. And like I said, this is where our team came together and it flipped the script. In the third period, get this. We had eight shots on goal to Minnesota's two shots on goal. Minnesota had a total in that game of 23. I knew there was a 23 in there. Had a, uh, had a uh, game time total of 23 shots on goal. Murray blocked all 23 versus Dallas's 20 shots on goal. You're not shooting the puck enough. That's what I see. You're putting that all on uh, Matt Murray, and Matt Murray says, all right. Well, it's not just that. Think of how long they had to have been in our offensive zone to squeeze off 12 shots. Yeah. In that first period versus four on our, our end. So you're coming out and you're putting, you're already in the first period, you're putting your goal minder in a bind by number one, not getting it out of your offensive zone, mm-hmm. but forcing him to deal with 12 shots on goal. And Murray was on it that night. I mean, Murray was on it. Murray was out there, and he was he was a man on the mission. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think his grandma was in uh, attendance that night. So he, he, <laughs> you, you don't lose in front of your grandma. <laughs> I love that for him. That's so awesome. That's That's awesome indeed. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, once again, Matt Murray is a very comparable. He's a very good goaltender. I'm not going to sit here and say he's elite. He's Ottinger level or anything like that. I'm not stupid. I know that. He, he still hasn't proven himself against NHL teams. But we're not giving him his opportunity to prove himself either. And we're putting right. our net minders that we're going to need. If, you know, if, if, we, if we plan on making a run in the playoffs, if we even make the playoffs, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a big old if on that at this point, the way they're playing. You know, we make the playoffs, you're gonna need your netminders and you're gonna need them healthy and well rested. And like I said, last season, I think the reason we petered out was because you know, you live and you die. The way the way the stars are right now is you live and you die by your netminder and how you treat your netminder. And right now, we are not treating our netminder very well, and we are going to die on that sword. We're, gonna, we're, we're, we're just going to gonna stand our ground. We're just going to die on that sword, you know, oh, Coach DeBoer. I mean, I wish I could be in his head to see what he's thinking because there's no way that you can think putting Wedgwood in for 11 straight games is a good idea, especially when you have – someone like Matt Murray who could come in there. And you know what? So let's say you lost the game. Well, you know what? We probably lost that game with Wedgwood in there in, as well. And why not, instead of focus on what netminder you have in there so you can give your netminders a rest, why not focus on your defense and finding out what they can do 
to help your netminders. That that makes me wonder why the defense isn't showing the goaltender the ropes. Like, you know, that they they're the defense for the reason, and he's the goaltender for a reason. <laughs> Goalie, that's it. So, you know, you got a brand new face and that you need to be playing like he's the brand new face and you need to show him, hey, kid, we got you. Yeah. And he comes out with a 4 nothing win. I don't want to say it was on his own, but, yeah, it it was pretty well on his own. Let's, let's be real because, you know, he, he just owned it. Yeah, he did. And, and you you scratch him like and he's been up and down ever since because of the salary cap thing yes you know the salary cap if you bounce him up and down it doesn't count against the cap from what I've understood right so, and I see that uh, they they did but they announced it, uh, it looks like four hours ago that they are bringing him back up you need to let him play I mean, I don't know if you let him play. If you look at uh, L.A., their roster is just out. Well, I wouldn't let him play tonight against L.A., but, you know, let me look at, you know, wh- who, do, who do we have coming up? So we have L.A. tonight, and then we have uh, Philadelphia on the 18th. You know what? Why not, why not throw him in there against Philadelphia? But you know, iron sharpens iron. And worst case scenario, okay, put Ottinger in there against uh, L.A. and Philly, and then you've got New Jersey on the twentieth. Put Matt Murray in against New Jersey, the the Devils. Uh, or you throw Ottinger in there for these next three games, and then you give him a rest against the Islanders on the twenty first. I mean, you could you could play you could potentially play in these next five games. The first three play Ottinger. The next two play uh, Matt Murray. If you know Wedgwood's still going to be out for that for that period of time, which I feel like he is, you know. So if I were management, this is how I would do it: you you play Ottinger against L.A., Philly, and New Jersey, the the Devils, and then you play. Uh, Matt Murray against the Islanders and the Red Wings. Matt Murray against the Red Wings would be interesting. I, I think so too. You know, and then you've got Anaheim as well, so you could actually play him against Anaheim as well, and that gives that that gives Ottinger a three game rest, so he can come in against Washington or. You know, even if you're really concerned about this, okay, so play Matt Murray against the Islanders, and then you bring Ottinger back in against Detroit, play Matt Murray against Anaheim, and bring Ottinger back in against Washington. At least you're giving Ottinger those breaks, those resting periods, so his body can heal itself. Yeah. I mean, you know, people said that when – uh, about Miro Haskinen because he was on the injured list for a couple games. If he's not still, um, they're like he needs to. We need to be careful with him because he's a top player. You know that sort of thing. And you know you got to be careful of Jake too because you know you got Wedgwood on the shelf for whatever time. Ottinger's coming back. You know he. We don't know how healed he really is. I mean, obviously he's doing all right. But look at the first game he came back. Did that look all right to you? No. No, he looked he looked out of it. So, you know, you you got to find the balance. Like, and and the more you sit there and you sit on one player, the more you're gonna make it so that there's more likelihood of injury. And that that's a scary thing in itself. Wedgwood. Ottinger gets injured again, then what? Then you got Matt Murray and who else? <laughs> so I mean, yeah, you could do you could split the next six games evenly, three to three between the two. 
doesn't matter which way you, you shake it, but, you know, give them both three of the next six. And I think you, you come out of it all right. I mean, um, the Islanders, the Devils, you know, th- those are Eastern Conference teams. Right. So, I mean, divisional standings or conference standings, eh. Is it really that important that we come out of there with two points? I mean, it'd be great. But if you're going to uh, have a game against L.A., for example, that's two points you need because that affects you. And I agree with playing Ottinger tonight. He's your best opportunity to win. Nothing against Matt Murray, but Matt Murray hasn't proven himself to that level yet. So if you you know if you're looking at your two goal you you know net miners that you have, of course Ottinger is going to be your best bet. But that being said, you also want to rest Ottinger because you don't know how long Wedgwood's going to be out. You know, so. Yeah, I'm I'm in 100 total agreement with you, you know. And like I said, you don't have to do it game one game uh, Andre one game Murray, but I do recommend. And even if you don't play three and three, it, it at least needs to be skewed a little bit. At least maybe four and two over this next six game period. But you've got to give Andre more rest than you did Wedgwood. You cannot play Andre for 11 straight games coming off of injury and expect him to continue to win and expect him to be there in full strength going into a possible postseason run. That's why I think you roll the dice and you put Matt Murray in at some point very soon. If I not agree. tonight, huh? I agree. Look, you're not going to have any confidence in him if you're just going to sprinkle him in one game here, one game there. Mm-hmm. Four nothing was great. Four nothing against Minnesota was good. Division rival, hey, you shut them out, and you took the two points from them. And you know, here's a point that the announcers were making during that game when when Murray was in there. He'd been sitting for eleven games, just sitting. For a netminder, that's never good. Yeah, okay, he's out there in practice. He's getting you know shots on him in practice, but. Like they said, practice is not the same as a game. It's a different speed. It's a different style. It's a different expectation. You know, when, when, you, when you're being shot on in practice, you know, nine times out of ten, they're going ha- half rink, and they're setting up offensive-defensive plays to work on offensive-defensive plays. You know, very rare are you playing full, full court, you know, full, full ice during practice. So getting your mindset into that, you know, tracking the puck, keeping an eye on the puck as it's down the ice and things of that nature. All of that stuff is important, especially when you're a netminder. And keeping a netminder on the bench for 11 games, you're, you're doing nothing but harming them. You're harming, your, your, you're harming the netminder that you're playing for 11 games. You're harming the, the netminder you're sitting for 11 games. And you're harming your team as well. Because let's just say, for the sake of saying, let's hope it doesn't happen. But what what do we do if Andre goes down now? And we've got Wedgwood out, like you were saying, and we don't have that chemistry between the team and Murray. Right. So you want to also not to take away from just the pure health of the two net miners, but you also want to get a net miner in there in case you're going to need him, so that he does have that rapport and that that camaraderie built up with this team because believe right. it, you know, you're, if you're a good net minder and you're doing everything that you can, believe it or not, you, your players will start playing for you. Yeah. We've seen it. Oh, we, we saw, we definitely saw it against Minnesota the other night when, when, uh, when, when Murray was in there, that third period, Dallas played shut out hockey. They wanted to give Murray that shutout. And the proof is in the pudding. You know, look how many shots on goal we had in that third period. I think we had eight to, to two. That means they took control of the puck. Exactly. Why wait to the third period to do that is my question. 
They love to do that. They like to wait till the middle of the second period. All the way to the, the end of the third. So they're always I don't want to say it like a football game, but they're they're a second half team. They really are. I believe the announcer said something like that as well. They're a second period on team. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's just look at this last Chicago game. This is going to blow your mind. Okay, so the first period, Dallas actually outshot Chicago 8-6. That was a 0-0 period. The second period, Dallas had nine shots on goal to 19 shots on goal by Chicago, and Chicago scored a goal in that period. We go into the third period. It's one to nothing. Stars got to do something, or else they're going to wind up either losing this game, going to a tie, or whatever. And it's 13 shots on goal by Dallas to 10 shots on goal by Chicago for a total. And this is another thing I've noticed. Even in the games that we win, we are outshot by our opponents, not even by a small margin. They outshot us 35 to 30. That's five additional shots on goal. Good grief. <laughs> it's like they luck into the puck from that point of view. Like, if you don't know what the Stars actually play, when you hear 35-30, it sounds like they just luck it into some goals. Yeah. I'm just being honest here. Um, and, yeah, I... <laughs> I sit here and watch YouTube a lot of my day watching them just to see what happens. And, you know, I know better, but 35, 30 is, is like, Oh, Hey, there's a goal. Oh, Hey, five more shots. Nope. No goal. Five more shots. Oh, Hey, they go. They have a goal. What, what, why, why that that's all I can ask you because you know, when, when you control the puck, when you shoot it on net and you force the play in the attack zone, man, you can send that goal, you scramble, and you can send everybody out of position. I We've seen them close in on the defense and make it so that those players got in the way of the opposing goalie. <laughs> we've seen it. And it's just like... I mean, I I think, I could be wrong, but I think they are a more balanced team now instead of defense first like they were under Montgomery and Hitchcock and, and the predecessors. Yeah, they're, they're a little more balanced now, but, you know, you, you got the talent to control the puck. I mean, Thomas Harley is uncorking slap shots from the blue line, for crying out loud. Yes, he sure is. He's got nine goals on the season right now, 11 assists. That's a defenseman, guys. You're getting goals from defensemen. What does that tell you? They can control the puck. Why don't they? He currently has more goals than Ben Smith, Steele, Foxa, and uh, Delandria. He's got more goals than the whole fourth line. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's funny. <laughs> that's just a, a fan of offensive defensemen, really. That's all I am when it comes to that. I'm not making fun of anybody. But a defenseman has more goals than your third or fourth line forwards. Mm -hmm. Wild. That means they can score from anywhere. Anyway. So why are you allergic to the puck? And let's shine a little spotlight on on uh, L.A. tonight. You got Andre Kopitar. Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty. Ever heard of him? Yeah. Drew Doughty is another one of those guys that can absolutely uncork one. He's got eight goals this season. <laughs> he's he's going to match up well with Thomas Harley. Yes, he is. I mean, look at that. It's almost yeah. shocking how even these two teams really are. Shoot, look at the next few games. 
like genuinely. You know that this for the kings, all you have to do is tinker with your strategy just a little bit, because they are evenly matched teams, and you can find a way to beat them. Like I, I like the evenly matched games. I really do because, you know, it, it takes one a heck of a mistake to end up six three. You're gonna see a one goal game in an evenly matched team like that, or evenly matched matchup like that, whatever you want to call it. But then you get guys like Colorado coming in, teams like Colorado rather. They start to outchange you. They start to outchange you. That means fresher legs. That means they're in and out shorter time. That means your stars are scrambling. Yeah. Just to keep the matchup. And LA could do that. I'm not saying they will. I haven't seen a whole lot of their games because of, well, I don't have the ability to, but in an evenly matched up uh, game, they very well could. They could throw something new at these guys that could send them into a tizzy. And look, I'm not dis uh, I'm not disrespecting the Kings. They they're a fairly good team. They've always been fun to watch for like the last few years. Um it oof, I'm scared. You've heard me say this a lot, and a lot of times I've been right. Because the stars do not know how to control the puck. When you control the puck, you control the game. Just like in football, when you control the ball, guess what? Where you go, the game goes. And this is going to be a battle of two third-place teams, you know. Dallas Stars, third place in the Central, and LA Kings are third place in the Pacific. That's how evenly matched this. It, like I said, if you look at this, it's crazy how evenly matched these two teams are. It's almost unfair. <laughs> it's going to make for a very good game. Very, very good game. And, you know, honest and truly, games like this, it's the team that's going to, that makes the most mistakes, that make, that has the most turnovers and things of that nature, that's going to wind up losing this game. That's what scares me about Dallas because they're very prone to turning over the puck and making mistakes, costly mistakes. Let's delve into that for a little bit. Let's talk about their turnovers and costly mistakes. Man, we've all seen that they make the QTUT plays trying to do the darn thing and put it in the net. How do you eliminate the turnovers against the LA Kings? I mean, look at their roster. Seriously, look at the Kings roster. Well, one, one thing that I've noticed in the last couple of games watching the Stars play is it's their play when they go into the offensive zone. Yes, I know they like to do this shoot in, chase the puck, and then fight for it against the along the boards. Well, that's great. The problem being is when they do win control of that puck nine times, you know, several times I've seen. Now, I don't want to say nine times out of ten because that's probably not an accurate number, but it probably I would at least say, you know, eight or you know, eight times out of ten, you know, they're passing and passing it into open ice where there's nobody there, not a star or an opposing team's player, and the opposing team is the one that gets the puck and winds up turning it into either a fast break or, you know, getting it out of their zone and in, into Dallas's zone, and this is something that I have I've seen them do several times. This. I am not a big fan of this shoot in and then fight for the puck once we get into the offensive zone. I'm much more a fan of taking the offensive zone with your control, set up your offense, pass it around, and set up a shot. This shoot it in and fight for the fight for the puck. Granted, I understand there are moments where you want to do that because you want to wind up, you know, doing a uh, you know a, a line shift or something of that nature. I understand those moments, but. When you've already done a line shift, you're not going to be changing the lineup as you're going into the offensive zone. Why shoot it into the boards and then fight for it? Why not just carry it in, set your offense, and do do what you can do to get a good shot off? 
you would think it wouldn't be that hard with the talent that they have. I mean, you wouldn't go. Say again. You wouldn't think. They have the talent to to carry it in on the wing or the center. Have the defense drop in there there at the blue line, cycle it around, get in better position from there. When somebody has the puck at the blue line, man, they could get Joe Pavelski in front of the net easily when they do that. Or Sagan, because he's getting good at that too. You know, the, it it very well could work out just carrying the puck in. You're right. However, it depends on the opposing team's style of play as well. You know, do they do they play weak side lock or, you know, something of that nature? Um, it just, yeah, it depends. But it seems like the, the dump and chase is what we do, period. And, you know, I'm, I'm probably wrong about it. But more often than not, yeah, I feel like um, even let's go Sagan, Duchesne, and who's there? Who's the other guy on that? I'm drawing a blank. Duchesne, Sagan, Marchment? Yeah, Marchment. That's Marchment. Mm-hmm. Why are they dumping the puck in? Why? Why is... I mean, I'm not saying they do all the time, but they shouldn't be, is my bottom line. The the one team or the one one team, the one line that should be dumping it in constantly should be your fourth line. That's your grinding line. Why is a Robertson line gonna need to do that? Robertson's fast. Rupe Hintz is fast. Any li- number of those players, any one of those lines, with the exception of maybe the fourth line, could carry it in, set up, and shoot. And the reason I say the fourth line shouldn't is because you got Redick Foxa, Sam Steele, Craig Smith, all those guys, Delandria too. Those guys are hard-nosed people, and I believe they could be the ones to force the other team off the puck. That's what they're there. To, that's what they're there to do. Sagan's not made for that. Sagan's a playmaker. What does that mean? You said you send them in like his butts on fire. Pavelski. What does Pavelski do? He's a net front guy, right? Right. So, you got a guy like Robertson and Hintz. Carry the puck in. You don't need to dump and chase. What what you do against, let's say, um, L.A. Let, let's go ahead and say that because you got, uh, I believe, Kopitar is still a king. Is he? Yes. Yes. You got him. You've got... Um, Dowdy. Dowdy's a defenseman. Why on earth would you give the defenseman like that a free shot at the puck with nobody around? That would be like giving the puck to Kale McCarr on a silver platter from the freaking avalanche saying, here you go. Go bury it in front in, in, in our net. Not in our net or in front of our net, but in the net. Here, take your free shot. Yes, it works against some teams, but it's not supposed to work against all. That's not what that strategy is there for. It's there. To me, I would think the dump and chase is. Uh, I want to say like to to turn it football. I want to see like say like a prevent type thing. Because if you've got a two-goal lead, three-goal lead, you dump and chase, you send it, and you let them go get it and push back. Done deal, right? That's right. That, to me, is what that strategy is for. Unless you can actually, well, yeah, see, that's the problem, too. The Stars can't keep a two-goal lead sometimes, either. And that's usually when they do use that strategy. Uh So why is the dump and chase even in the star's repertoire? I don't know. And I hate the dump and chase. It's, it's, (sighs) 
It feels like I'm watching college hockey when I see that. Oh, hey, if I do this, that means you're not fast enough to go get it and put it in on us. That's a slap in the face. I know that's not what it's meant to be. I know it's a a way for them to get set up and go chase the puck and, and all that good stuff, but it doesn't do that. You don't have a quick enough team. This team is quick. This team is quick, but you've got the Duchesne line and you've got the Hens line. Those are the only two lines that I know of, strictly off the top of my head, that can play that strategy, but you don't need to. Because those guys have good hands, too. And, I mean, oof, I, I've ranted about that for a while now. Yeah. But what's the point? Dump and change. You got the – carry the puck in the zone. I almost said in the net. Oh, my gosh. Carry the puck into the zone. I mean, you're going to get shoved by Dowdy. You're going to get shoved by all those guys on the defense, but, you know, protect the puck and you're good to go. No disrespect to L.A., but, I mean, the Stars are able. Is that the right word to say? The Stars have the ability to skate circles around L.A. even though they're evenly matched. You just have to go about it the right way. I mean, look at what, let's go, let's take it to the football thing. Did you expect Houston to come out firing the way they did? If you want my honest opinion, I, I so in coming into the season, I watched the um, that Georgia game last season, last year, where C.J. Stroud put up so many good numbers against Georgia, and Georgia has uh, NFL caliber style of defense. So, yes, I kind of expected C.J. Stroud to come out, but I didn't expect him to come out and only throw five interceptions for the season. No, I I figured it would be a little bit higher interception rate than that. I didn't think he was going to come out for – I don't remember how many games he went without an interception. Um, No, I I cannot honestly and truly say – and and coming into the season, I predicted that they would be – I figured they'd be nine and uh, and six. Uh, or nine and excuse me, uh, nine and seven, excuse me, nine and seven, and nine, nine and nine and eight. What am I thinking? Nine and eight. I, I figured they'd be one game above. Uh, uh, I figured they'd be one game above uh, five hundred. But see, they figured it out. They figured out how to make that stuff work. And C.J. Stroud is lighting them on fire in the playoffs. Right? That he is. So, let me ask you this. Yeah, it's about the talent around them, but it's also about how you use that talent, is it not? Yes, it is. These Dallas Stars players, man, they are loaded to the gills. And, you know, that's... I know I threw a little bit of shade at the defense, and we did a little bit earlier. But when they play for each other, man, they play for each other. But they do. So, is the dump and chase going to work when they're playing for each other? Or is the dump and chase just the dump and chase? Like, to me, like I said, the dump and chase is just prevent. Yeah, and like I like I said, there is a there is a place in the game for the dump and chase. Like if you're trying to change up lineups or or things of that nature, yes. Um, if you don't, have, if your players just aren't in position yet, and you know you're you're not able to just take it over. Okay, I understand that. I'm not saying get rid of the dump and chase completely. I'm just right. saying limit it. Reduce it. The only places it needs to be used is if you're making a line change, if you're trying to alleviate the pressure in your own zone, and 
you want to back them off. Or if you've got a good enough lead. That is not an attack strategy at all. No, not at all. It, it shouldn't be. It should be, like you said, if it's to give somebody a break. And, you know, taking it out of the offensive z- or the defensive zone, excuse me, into the offensive zone, that would do it. Because you send the other team back after the puck, too. You can go get it. You can body them off the puck if you so choose, or you can kill the time or whatever the case may be. But it is not a way to pad a one nothing lead at all. No. And it's not going to work against L.A. <laughs> it's not. I don't even remember who their goalie is. I, no, it's not Quick. Quick is in... Where is he? New York? Vegas. Oh my gosh, I don't remember. Jonathan Quick was their goalie. And, you know, he that's another guy that... Yeah, he he has an indelible mark on my brain. I will tell you that. It doesn't matter who's in net for L.A. You don't do that against them. No. That defense don't screw around. That's a team yeah. that that works for each other. And, you know, that's how you're going to have to beat L.A. You're going to have to work for each other, too. Yeah. I'd have to say if I have a prediction for tonight's game, I predict that it's going to be a Stars win, and I think it's going to be like a 5-4 game, and I think the Stars are going to have to do a comeback again. I think the Stars are going to play comeback again. That's just their that's their that's their modus operandi, as they say, and I don't see them changing it, especially not tonight. <sighs> One nothing into the third period that last game. Yeah, one they decided. into the third period before they decided to actually do something. Three nothing Kings. So you're going for the Kings shutout tonight, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Because you can't. All due respect to both teams, you can't play around. On the Kings. If you look back at their uh, all-time series, man, it's been fun. I'll say that at the very least. But when Dallas wins, they win. And when they lose, boy. But I think the, the, the third period thing that happened the other night, I think that's a sign that the offense might be trying to dry out. So, yeah, I think it dries up here. And I think it's 3 nothing. Well, that's a hell of a prediction. I hope it goes more my way than your way, but we'll see tonight. I do, too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> that's just me going, okay, numbers don't lie. Where's the offense? That's all it is. No disrespect hey. towards my team. I will still watch them. You know this. I hear you. And on that note, unfortunately, I am going to have to run. I have to go to go do a few things for my son-in-law. I'm, I'm sorry, my stepson and my daughter-in-law. They need me to help them with some cable-related stuff. So I do have to run, but hopefully the Stars win tonight. Hopefully they do what we're both saying and give Ottinger a break with Matt Murray. And I guess we'll see what we can see. I, I just hope you're right. I want to see that prediction. Yeah. I just want to see him win. I don't care about anything else. Just give me the two points. I hear you. Well, that being said, go Stars. Go Stars. Hey, man, thanks for your time, and I hope I catch you again soon. Yes, sir. All right. We're out of here. See ya.